Hello, hello, hello. Now it's okay. Okay. Sorry, guys, for the late. Uh, there is some technical issue. There is uh, some glitch in uh, audio. So now, welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Good evening, Mehnas. Good evening, Vish, Bhumit, Devendra, Agarwal. Cute life, Raj Patida. Good evening, everyone. Hope you're all doing good. Hope you're all doing good. Welcome to the family of ISM EduTech. I hope you're all in your first year. Okay, and, and uh, going to join your first year. Hope everyone is doing good. Okay, so these classes, okay, these classes are going to be mainly concentrating on the basics. So we are going to mainly concentrate on the basics. Now, we'll be discussing about the physiology. Okay, the system, okay, the subject which we are going to discuss is the physiology, sir. Now, as you guys and you're in your first year, okay, I want you to know the physiology is mainly divided into two parts, okay, broad category, the general physiology and the systemic physiology, okay, general and systemic physiology. So, in general physiology, we'll be discussing about the general topics like cell membrane, okay, nerves, muscles, action potentials, blood, okay, etc. But in systemic physiology, we'll be discussing about the systems like cardiovascular system, renal system, gastrointestinal system, okay, central nervous system, respiratory system, something like that. See, now in our classes for the next few days, we are going to mainly concentrate on the general physiology, so the general topics, which are going to be mainly forming your basics, the basics. Let me tell you one thing. Guys, in first year, what are the subjects which are there? Physiology anatomy, biochemistry. Why it is just the physiology, anatomy, biochemistry? Okay, you are first year going to start with the physiology only. Why physiology? Because physiology forms the basis. It forms the basis, sir. It's the basement on which you will build the concepts. Okay, without proper understanding in physiology, you can never form a proper building. You can never build a proper building, sir. Okay, so physiology is the basics. If you are not good with your physiology, it's hard for you to understand the pathology. If you know the normal process, then you can understand what is abnormality, that is pathology. If you know the pathology well, you know how to do the treatment, that's the pharmacology. So, physiology forms the basis for everything. Now, in this live classes, we'll be mainly concentrating on the general physiology. That too, in this today's class, let me teach you about the cell membrane. Okay. So, this classes, again, I'm telling you, this is for the first year students. And in these classes, from the basics, we will go to the extreme. Okay. So, from the basic, from the ABCD level to the extreme level, what are the questions that are going to come in your exam? I will discuss everything, sir. But in a slow pace. Okay. Having said that, now, guys, today's topic is, right? Today's topic is cell membrane. Okay. Cell Membrane, so it's a membrane which is present around the cell. The cell membrane, it's also called as what? It's also called as plasma membrane. Or plasma lemma. Some people will call it also plasma lemma or the plasma membrane. Now, see, for example, imagine this is a one cell. So this is one cell. Okay, this is one single cell, right? See, now inside the cell, we know the central most structure is called as a nucleus. You have shared in your class 11th and 12th. Now, this is the cytoplasm. Okay. This is the cytoplasm. Now, this is the extracellular fluid. Outside of the cell, there is going to be the extracellular matrix or the extracellular fluid. Now, what is this structure which I am highlighting right now in this black color? What is this structure? So, this is the cell membrane. It's a membrane of the cell which is separating the intracellular environment from the extracellular environment. Okay. So, it's just like a boundary, sir. It's just like a boundary for the cell. Okay. Outside, it is extracellular. Inside, it is intracellular cytoplasm. Okay. Now, what you need to know is, sir, this cell membrane, hai na? See, look here. What exactly it is made up of? What is the composition of the cell membrane? Okay. So, the cell membrane, it is actually made up of what? It is made up of three components. There are three raw materials. Okay. If you, if you are making a curry in your home, okay, your mom is making some cur curry, sir. Okay. Now, there should be some raw materials, right? In the same way, 
This cell membrane is made up of what? It's made up of proteins. Okay, lipids and carbohydrates. Okay, now my question to you guys, which component is going to be more? Okay, so cell membrane is made up of these three structures, proteins, lipids as well as carbohydrates. Now what do you think? Which will be more in percentage? Proteins or lipids or carbohydrates? What do you think? They go, students. Agarwal? Yes, yes, Devendra. No, Devendra, you are not true. It's not the lipids, sir. Okay. Proteins almost book some books mention 50%, some books mention 55%. So 50 to 55%. They go, 50 to 55% of your cell membrane is actually made up of the proteins, sir. Proteins. Now, lipids, how much? Sir, lipids, 45%. Okay. There is a little variation. Variation can be there. 55% and 45%. Okay, 45%. And carbohydrates are least, very much least. Okay, what are your carbohydrates? Lipids, like, you know, there is a range, 40, 40 to 45%. There is a range, of course. Okay. So, if you want to be very much specific, 40 to 45 percent. Okay. And the carbohydrates are going to be 3 to 5 percent. Okay. Different books mention different, different ranges. But in general, you need to understand that the proteins are more in number. The protein percentage is more when compared to the lipids, when compared to the carbohydrates. Okay. Now, let's discuss about one by one some important points. So, first let's discuss about the lipids. Okay. Look. So, this is the cell membrane, right? They go here. Now, in this cell membrane, actually it is made up of two layers. There, are, It's a bilipid layer, sir. It's a bilipid layer. They go. This is one layer. This is the other layer. So, cell membrane is actually made up of two layers. So, let me write here. It's a bilipid layer. Okay. Bilipid layer. Now, for your simple understanding, let me show you. Sir, these are the lipids. Okay. So, this is the first layer. This is the second layer. The lipids are arranged like this, sir. Okay. Now, you will get it out. Sir, these lipids are called as, of course, you are, sir, you are telling us these are the lipids. Okay. See, this is the first layer of lipids. This is the first layer of lipids. This is the second layer of lipids. If you zoom here, see, they go. It's the same thing. Okay. Here, you are seeing the same thing, sir. These are the head. These are the tails. This is a head, this is a tail, head and tail, sir. So, this is one layer, this is the other layer, okay, this is the other layer. So, it's a bilipid layer, okay. Now, okay, these are the lipids. Now, this head region, okay, this head region, sir. Now, okay, let me put it this way. This is the outside the cell. This is outside the cell, this is inside the cell. Inside means who is going to be there inside the cell. See, if this is the cell membrane, this is outside, this is inside. Inside the cell, which fluid is going to be there? Which fluid is going to be there, guys? Agarwal, warrior, mehnaz. Which fluid is going to be there? So, inside, there is going to be cytoplasm. Okay? Now, outside, there is going to be extracellular fluid. Outside, there is ECF, sir. Extracellular fluid is going to be there. Now, these heads are there, right? These are the heads. See, these heads are hydrophilic. Hydrophilic. So, this also hydrophilic. So, this is the important point which you need to know. The heads of these lipid molecules, the heads of these lipid molecules are hydrophilic in nature. That's why they are towards the water. Hydrophilic means hydro means water, philic means loving. So, they will love to bind with the, sir, they will love to be with the water. So, here outside extracellular fluid, fluid is there. So, head is towards the fluid. Inside, there is cytoplasm, means water. There is cytoplasm is made up of more water only, no? So, that's why the heads, the head region is towards the cytoplasm, okay? But what are these, sir? See, these are the tails. Tails. These tails are made up of fatty acids. The tails are made up of fatty acids and they are hydrophobic. Okay, they are hydrophobic. Okay, they are hydrophobic. So, hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic 
tails hydrophobic tails are made up of the fatty acids now my question to you my question to you sir okay we are talking about lipids first we are talking about the lipids there is a bilipid layer okay sir what is this lipid what are the most common lipids lipids most common lipids any idea guys what are the most common lipids any idea what is the most common lipid that is yes agarwal you are true phospholipid okay so these are the phospholipids so it is called as a phospholipid bilayer the cell membrane is an example of phospholipid bilayer sir okay it's a phospholipid bilayer warrior yes you are true okay phospholipids now apart from phospholipids sir in the cell membrane they go apart from phospholipids which other lipids are present cholesterol cholesterol it's also a lipid cholesterol is also a lipid okay but very important point note okay note sir triglycerides triglycerides are absent in cell membrane okay so which type of lipid is not present sir majority most common it's the phospholipids most common it's the phospholipids even cholesterol is present now which lipids are not present in the cell membrane triglycerides are absent in the cell membrane okay triglycerides are absent in the cell membrane sir now what you need to know here let me tell you important points about the phospholipids phospholipids guys can you tell me some examples of phospholipids see dekho you know it so this is the bilipid layer phospholipids okay, cell membrane is an example of bilipid layer please draw this with me in your books my suggestion to you is you should maintain a handwritten notes from first year to till fifth year if there is one subject physiology one handwritten notes is must and should sir okay most of the students what they will do is they will listen to the lecture they will feel like you know sir we got we understood everything but they will simply leave it no you should maintain the books the key for the success in the exams is maintenance of the books with your own handwriting first year till fifth year physiology one notes anatomy one notes biochemistry one notes like that you need to maintain 19 notes for 19 subjects okay so take this advice sir this is the outer leaflet right outer layer are the outer leaflet cell membrane is a bilipid layer outer layer inner layer so outer layer this is the inner layer important points in the layer now phospholipids they go this is a little important sir phospholipids which type of phospholipids are present in this outer layer in this outer layer and inner layer outer layer and inner layer not the same type of phospholipids are not there sir same type of phospholipids are not present okay there is a little difference there is a little difference in composition sir the first phospholipid is phosphatidyl choline okay phosphatidyl choline so phosphatidyl choline is the most common phospholipid second sphingomyelin sphingo Okay, sphingomyelin. So this phosphatidyl choline (MCQ) phosphatidyl choline it's a type of phospholipid which is present in the outer leaflet of the cell membrane. Sphingomyelin it's also a phospholipid which is present in the outer leaflet mainly. Okay. Apart from that, sir, phosphatidyl ethanolamine phosphatidyl ethanolamine and phosphatidyl serine see they are mainly present these are i'm just highlighting them with a the different color see phosphatidyl ethanolamine phosphatidyl serine these are also phospholipids but where they are present sir they are mainly present in the inner leaflet in the outer leaflet different types of phospholipids in the inner leaflet there are different types of phospholipids present okay so they are present in inner leaflet or the inner layer okay these two are present in outer layer okay 
Now, you just tell me, sir, one by one, what we have discussed. So, we have discussed the cell membrane is a bilipid layer. It's made up of phospholipids. What are the important types of phospholipids? So, the important, the most common phospholipid is phosphoridylcholine, which is present mainly in the outer leaflet. Sphingomyelin, it is mainly present in the, sphingomyelin is also present in the outer leaflet. Then, so, in the inner leaflet, there is phosphoridyl ethanolamine as well as phosphoridyl serine. Now, my questions to you. My question to you, you should answer this. Sir, cell membrane, right? This is a question which was asked in the recent FMG exam, in the recent, the exam which happened almost one, one week back, one week back, sir, this exam have happened. You all guys are going to give the same FMG exam. Sir, in that exam, this question was asked. Cell membrane is made up of lipid bilayer, right? Lipid bilayer. So, which substances? cross the cell membrane. Which substances cross the cell membrane? I am giving you two options A and B. Which substances will cross the cell membrane? First option number one. Lipid soluble substances water soluble substances okay let me give you two more options c and d polar substances non polar substances what do you say what do you think sir so which substances are going to cause the cell membrane which substances are going to cause the cell membrane what do you think which options? Yeah, lipid soluble substances. Okay, lipid soluble substances. Those substances which are soluble, lipid soluble, they will easily cross the cell membrane. And you can also say nonpolar substances. What are the nonpolar substances? Nonpolar substances are the substances without any charge, non charge, non ionic substances. Okay, non ionic substances. Okay, non ionic substances. Okay, so that substance which does not have any charge. Positive charge, negative charge. For example, let me uh, explain you. Imagine this is the cell membrane, sir. Okay, this is the cell membrane. This is outside. Okay, this is inside. Outside, inside. Right? Now, imagine there is a substance. For, for example, substance X. If the substance X, it is having a negative charge. Or positive charge, it doesn't matter. Okay, negative charge or positive charge. Do you think this substance is going to cross the cell membrane? No, it cannot cross the cell membrane. So, ionic substances are not able to cross the cell membrane. So, this is the answer, sir. Lipid soluble and non-ionic substances will cross the cell membrane. The question which was asked is, see, which of the following hormone, question which was asked, sir, in the recent exam, which of the following hormone crosses the cell membrane. Okay. So, which hormones can cross the cell membrane? Imagine, there is this one hormone, sir. For example, insulin. Let's take an insulin, sir. Insulin. Sir, this insulin hormone, it is coming from the pancreas. You know, pancreas produces the insulin. Insulin is coming and it is acting on the cell. Now, this insulin, can it go into the cell? Can it go into the cell? No, it cannot go, sir. Now, try to understand, guys. Imagine this is a cell. Okay, this is a cell membrane. I have shown you the cell membrane. Now, this is insulin. Remember, insulin, it's a peptide hormone. Okay, the ha this insulin hormone, it's made up of the peptide, like, you know, amino acids. It's made up of the amino acids, sir. So, this insulin hormone, it cannot enter into the cell. It cannot enter into the cell. So, do you know what happens? So, this insulin hormone is going to act on a receptor. So, insulin will come, it act on its receptor and certain biological changes will occur in the cell. But, remember, sir, there are certain hormones called as the steroids. Okay, steroid hormones. 
Now my question to you guys, do you know what are steroids or the steroid hormones? Warrior, Kiran Reddy, Agarwal, Babau, Mehnaz. Do you know what, is, what are the steroids? Any idea guys, those who have completed your first year? Yeah, warrior, you are saying steroidal hormones can cross. What, are the, what exactly is a steroid? What does it mean by a steroid, sir? Steroids means, steroids means that hormone, that hormone, any hormone, any hormone, which is derived from, okay, that hormone derived from cholesterol. Okay, that hormone which is derived from cholesterol. See, for example, from the cholesterol, testosterone is going to be formed. From the cholesterol, cortisol is going to form. Okay, from the same cholesterol, aldosterone is going to form. So, all this testosterone, okay, also estrogens. Okay, testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, aldosterone, they are all examples of steroids. Which means for all the steroid hormone, the one raw material, the one raw material is cholesterol. Okay, from the same cholesterol, you will make testosterone, you will make cortisol, you will make aldosterone, sir. So, they are forming from where? See, now they go. Testosterone, cortisol, aldosterone, they are all getting derived from where? They are all getting derived from this lipid molecule, cholesterol. So, now all these hormones, testosterone, cholesterol, aldosterone, what they will? Uh, they are going to cross the cell membrane or not? Yes, now they can cross the cell membrane. Because these hormones are lipid soluble hormones. Because they are derived from a lipid. Cholesterol is a lipid. So now right, cortisol, testosterone, aldosterone can cross the biological membrane or they can cross the cell membrane. But do you know what is the twist? The twist is, uh, this, is not the, this is not there in the options. In, in the recent FMG exam, the question was asked, which of the following hormones crosses the cell membrane? Okay. Now, in the options, they are not there. So, testosterone, cortisol, aldosterone are not there. So, is there is any other hormones which can cross the cell membrane? Any idea, guys? Any other hormone which can cross the cell membranes? See, not only this, right. Note. Testosterone, sorry, not, not uh, testosterone, it's the thyroid hormones. Okay, thyroid, yes, of course, testosterone, estrogen. Okay, both are sex hormones. Okay, both testosterone and estrogen, both are the sex hormones. So they will cross. Okay, they will cross. No, no doubt in that. But thyroid hormones, sir, thyroid hormones, can you give examples of how many types of thyroid hormones are there? How many types of thyroid hormones are there? How many types of thyroid hormones are there? T3, T4. Okay. So, T3, T4, these are the thyroid hormones. This is the question which was asked in the exam. So, thyroid hormones, yes, they cross the cell membrane true. Okay. They cross the cell membrane, sir. Okay. So, at the end of the day, the concept which I want you to know is any substance which is having a charge, okay, or any substance which is a water-soluble substance cannot cross the cell membrane. The lipid-soluble substances, like the steroid hormones, they will cross the cell membrane. Okay. Now my question to you, just answer, answer me. So now you should answer this. Okay. If you are using your brain, you should answer this. So testosterone, let me write. Testosterone, sex hormone, estrogen, sex hormone, progesterone. Okay. So testosterone, estrogen, progesterone. Next. Uh, thyroid hormones. Next, aldosterone and cortisol. Now you tell me, sir, all these hormones, they have their receptor. Where is the receptor? All these hormones, they have the receptor in the cell membrane or inside the cell. All of them, they are, going, are they going to have the cell surface receptors or intracellular receptors? So, all these hormones, they are going to have, what do you think? What do you think? Cell surface receptors or intracellular receptors? All of them, they are going to have, yes, excellent, intracellular receptors. 
okay these are all these hormones are going to have the intracellular receptors not the cell surfaces of the receptor the receptor is not present on the cell membrane the receptor is present inside the cell okay next what else you should know guys now just tell me one thing sir this bilipid layer is no there is this bilipid layer my question to you in one of the exam this question was asked so there is this bilipid layer cell membrane is it symmetrical or is it asymmetrical what do you think is it the symmetrical structure or is it a asymmetrical structure the cell membrane what do you think varun kashyap divijayin raj patil panmod is not there here miracles world vabhav what do you think asymmetrical why do you, why varun why do you think it is asymmetrical why do you think it is asymmetrical cell membrane yes right the cell membrane is asymmetrical okay it's asymmetrical sir why why because you know the answer you know the answer because the phospholipids look here the phospholipids which are present in the outer leaflet are totally different phospholipids the phospholipids which are present in the inner leaflet the phospholipids which are present in the outer leaflet and the phospholipids which are present in the inner leaflet they are of totally different types different types of phospholipids sir so they are different types there are different types of phospholipids so there is asymmetry in the outer leaflet and inner leaflet they are not symmetrical structures there is asymmetry okay that now after this what else i should teach you the basics look now let me ask you about the cholesterol okay now in one of the neat pg exams this question was asked cholesterol is there right what is the function of the cholesterol what this cholesterol is doing the cholesterol any idea what is the function of the cholesterol this cholesterol it's called as according to the latest uh, update of the like in nmc it was given that the next exam is going to be there for the 2028 batch so most probably i hope the most probably uh, like you know if god supports every every one of you most probably you will be giving just normal fmg exam but we never know okay for 2024 batch it was given that the exam is going to be next 2023 batch you guys are going to be in 2023 right so most probably it will be fmg only but we never know we never know no 100% 100% confirmation is not there okay we'll just let you know we'll we'll inform you what exactly is going to be conducted so cholesterol let's come back cholesterol cholesterol it is called as fluidity buffer fluidity buffer okay cholesterol in the cell membrane it is the fluidity buffer sir now very important mcq very important mcq for your exam sir what is this fluidity okay what exactly is this fluidity sir let me give you some examples with examples let me teach you okay let me show you an draw this and show you so dekho now so this is one cell from your class 11th and 12th you already know these things so this is one cell okay now outside the cell there is a bacteria present okay there is this bacteria sir okay outside the cell there is a bacteria present this is your wbc okay you, this is your wbc most probably your neutrophil or your macrophage okay now what this wbc is going to do so the wbc are the neutrophilic cell membrane now it is going to produce the pseudopods okay now the cell membrane is not a rigid structure sir the cell membrane is not like a cement it's a more flexible thing it's like a more flexible thing okay loose kind of thing the, uh, the phospholipids are not static in one single place they are all like you know floating they are all floating they are, they are like a sea they are like a sea okay so now what happens is dekho now this neutrophil or the wbc is going to extend it's a cell membrane like this okay and at the end of the day what happens is let me show you there will be totally the cell is going to totally engulf this bacteria okay so these are the extensions of the cell membrane okay now this is the same cell here is the bacteria so the bacteria now what is happening what is this process that's happening 
So the bacteria is taken into the cells. So this process is called as what? This process is called as phagocytosis. Phagocytosis or endocytosis. Okay. Endocytosis or phagocytosis. Now, for this purpose, what kind of cell membrane do you need? A flexible cell membrane or very rigid, static kind of cell membrane? Flexible cell membrane. The flexibility, which is also called as a fluidity, in a simple word, fluidity. Who is maintaining this fluidity? Who is maintaining this fluidity? It is the cholesterols. Cholesterols are considered as fluidity buffer. This is a neat PG MCQ. Okay, neat PG MCQ. Now, let's stop here. Now, let me explain you some other different concepts and I will come back to this fluidity. Okay, I will come back to this fluidity, sir. See, let's talk about the proteins. Now tell me, what is the percentage of the proteins in the cell membrane normally? What is the percentage of the cell, uh, proteins in the cell membrane? Ah, 55%, sir. 50 to 55% is the proteins. Okay. How much is the lipids? You already know it. Lipids. Just a recap. Lipids. Ah, it's a 40 to 45%. Okay, let's take a round figure. 45%. Okay, carbohydrates are negligible thing. Just forget about them. Okay. Now my question to you. Sir, what is the ratio? In one of the neat PG exam, this question was asked. The ratio of proteins to lipids what is the ratio of the proteins to lipids you know you in specific you know so proteins are 55 percent lipids are 45 percent proteins are more when compared to the lipids but the question asks what is the ratio of proteins to lipids see the best answer you should mark every time is one is to one yes of course though percentage wise it looks different percentage wise it looks different sir but in generally, okay, the number of proteins and the number of lipids, generally speaking, it will be equal, 1 is to 1 percent by weight. Okay, when you weigh the proteins and when you weigh the lipids, it will come 1 is to 1 percent, sir. Okay, so this is the question asked in the exam. The ratio of proteins to lipids. Now, in the same neat PG exam, the question was asked, sir, exceptions. Okay, exceptions, some important exceptions. Three exceptions I will tell you. Normally, proteins are more when compared to the lipids. But highest concentration of proteins are seen in which membrane? Highest concentration of protein. Normally, it is 55%. But 60%, 65%, more, more proteins. So, highest concentration of proteins. Highest concentration of proteins. Seen in which membrane? Which cell membrane? Any idea? Which membrane? Now, which membrane in the sense, see, not only cell membrane, see, not only cell membrane, there are other biological membranes also. Your Golgi complex is surrounded by a membrane. Your mitochondria is surrounded by a membrane. Same membrane, sir, made up of same phospholipid layer. So, is it cell membrane having high amount of proteins? Is it Golgi complex that is surrounded by the membrane, is it having more proteins? Mitochondria? Nuclear membrane, which membrane have highest concentration of the proteins? The best answer is inner mitochondrial. Okay, inner mitochondrial or uh, not, not rough endoplasmic reticulum. No, not, not true, sir. Not true. It's the inner membrane of the mitochondria. It's miracles whole. You are true. It's the inner mitochondrial membrane. Okay, inner mitochondrial membrane. Now, if you ask me, sir, can you tell me what is the function of mitochondria? Sir, in the mitochondria, ATP is getting produced. In the inner mitochondrial membrane, if you have studied your biochemistry in your class 11th and 12th, and even your first year, in the inner mitochondrial membrane, complex 1, complex 2, complex 3, complex 4, ATP synthesis will happen, oxidative phosphorylation. So, so many complexes, 1, 2, 3, 4. What are these complexes, sir? Proteins. So much number of, so many number of proteins are present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. So, in the inner mitochondrial membrane, the protein concentration is going to be highest. If you don't find this answer, if inner mitochondrial membrane is not there, then you can mark for the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So, what exactly is sarcoplasmic? See, this is the best answer, sir. Inner mitochondrial membrane is the best answer. What exactly is sarcoplasmic reticulum? Sarcoplasmic reticulum is nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum. It's nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum in skeletal muscles. Muscles. Okay, inside the muscles. So, sarcoplasmic reticulum is nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum within the smooth muscles. Uh, sorry, skeletal muscles. Done. Next, if you don't find these two, then the next best answer is going to be pre 
synaptic membrane. Now, some of the students will have a doubt, sir, what is this presynaptic membrane? You know, you know about the nerves, right? I hope you have shared this in your class 11th and 12th also. So, this is one neuron, nerve ending, nerve terminal, that's a nerve terminal. This is the other neuron, the, den the dendrite of the other neuron. So, this membrane, from here neurotransmitters are going to be released. The space is called as a synapse. The space is called as a synapse. Now, this membrane, which I am highlighting, so this membrane is a presynaptic membrane. So, this presynaptic membrane, yes, it consists of lot of proteins. It contains lot of proteins. So, these are the three answers I have given you. Okay, inner mitochondrial membrane, sarcoplasmic reticulum, and the presynaptic membrane, it contains large amount of proteins. Okay, now, exception two. The exception two, which I want you to know is, the everywhere proteins are highest, highest concentration of proteins everywhere. But where least concentration of proteins are there, in which cell membrane, in which membrane, I, I, I don't want to say it as a cell membrane, in which membrane, in which biological membrane, less quantities of proteins sir. but lipids are more, more lipids but less proteins, okay, lipid greater than proteins, any idea guys, any idea Agarwal, any idea miracles world, the fever of cricket, cricket, now, what do you think? Sir, 80% lipids, but 20% only proteins in the membrane. So, the answer is going to be Schwann cell membrane. I hope you know what are these cells. Schwann cell membrane. Okay, Schwann cell membrane. Now, guys, do you know what are the Schwann cells? Guys, do you have any idea about what are the Schwann cells? Not Swan cell, it's the Schwann cell. What are the Schwann cells? Oh, Devendra, you don't know. Now, let me tell you. See, now you should tell me, you should tell me. Sir, what is the structure that I am drawing? Sir, in a simple way. Okay, I am not a, a good artist. But anyway, what is this one? What is this one which I have drawn here? It's your favorite diagram in your class 10th, 11th. Like, you know, five marks for this diagram, right? Okay, when I used to study, they used to give this diagram for 5 marks. What is this? It's a neuron. It's a neuron. Okay. Now, in the neuron, they go here. In the neuron. What is this which I am showing in the red color? What I am showing here in a red color, sir? This is the myelin sheath. It's a myelin sheath. Okay, it's a myelin sheath. It's forming the myelination, insulation. See, around the neurons, you need to have the proper insulation. Otherwise, the currents are not going to grow up properly. Okay. So, your nerves are surrounded, I should say, the neurons are surrounded by this myelin sheath. Who is doing this myelination? So, this myelination is done by the Schwann cells. Okay, the Schwann cells, what they do? They do myelination. around neurons. Now, in your exam, this is a very famous question. The Schwann cells, yes, they do myelination around the neurons. Okay. In central nervous system or peripheral nervous system? This is the question, sir. Schwann cells, yes, they do myelination around the neurons in central nervous system or peripheral nervous system. My question to you. Now, some students are scratching their heads. Sir, what is central nervous system? What is peripheral nervous system? Very simple. In first year, you should know these things. The basic things are central nervous system means. Any idea, guys? What is the central nervous system? Central nervous system means brain and spinal cord. Okay, in the brain, brain and spinal cord. These two together, the brain and the spinal cord, these two structures together, it is called as a central nervous system. Then what is peripheral nervous system, sir? Guys, can you tell me what is the peripheral nervous system? Agarwal, Abdur, Acharya, Divi. What is the peripheral nervous system then? Peripheral nervous system includes what? Brain ho gaya. So, uh, like a spinal cord is also completed. So what else is left? The inputs and the outputs, sir. The inputs and the outputs. What are the inputs and outputs into the central nervous system? 
the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves. So peripheral nervous system includes, what exactly is peripheral nervous system? It includes spinal nerves and cranial nerves. Okay. So spinal nerves and cranial nerves. My question to you, those who have done your class 11th and 12th, like you know, those who are about to join to your MBBS. Okay. So now guys tell me, how many spinal nerves are there? How many spinal nerves are there? How many? How many spinal nerves are there? Any idea guys? Kiran? Kiran, come on, come on quickly. You should be like, you know, answering just like that. How many spinal nerves? Varun Kashyap? Varya? No, 31 pairs. Okay, so 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Okay, Agarwal, you know, 200? Oh my God, no. I have only 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Okay, and how many cranial nerves are there? 12 pairs. Okay, 12 pairs of cranial nerves. So, look here. The 31 pairs of spinal nerves and 12 pairs of cranial nerves, they form your peripheral nervous system. Okay, now, let's come back to our physiology topic. Our physiology topic is, sir, this swan cell membrane, this is a cell, in this swan cell, it's forming this myelination, no? Here, in the swan cell membrane, highest amount of lipids are there. Highest amount of lipids are there when compared to the proteins. This is one exception which I want you to know. Okay, done. After this, what else I should teach you? Now, let's come back to the concept of, okay, just let me teach you a few more things. Now, if you look at a cell membrane, if you look at a cell membrane, how the cell membrane is, uh, you know it, see, let me show you, this is the cell membrane. Ah, sir, cell membrane, it is made up of the phospholipids, these are the phospholipids, like this, okay, I am not going to draw the entire thing, you know it, so these are the phospholipids, phospholipid bilayer, okay, now in this phospholipid bilayer, it is a lipid, lipid bilayer, okay, now in between, what else are there, so there are proteins also, here and there, some important proteins are present. Okay, some important proteins are present in the cell membrane. Okay, my question to you is how exactly it is looking like, sir? For scientists, it looks like the phospholipid bilayer, it looks like a C. It's look, it's look like a C, sir, or a gel kind of substance. Okay, this phospholipid bilayer, it looks like a C or a gel kind of substance. It's looking like a gel. Okay, now in this gel, now these proteins are there, right? These proteins. Now, these proteins, they are looking like an iceberg in the sea. You know that you have seen the Titanic movie, right? Okay, I don't want to go into that detail right now. But anyway, in the sea, icebergs are floating. In the same way, in this phospholipid sea, there are these proteins floating. So, these proteins are like icebergs. So, this model they have gave, it is called as a fluid. Fluid means the sea. And mosaics, mosaics are nothing but these proteins which are floating like an iceberg. So, icebergs are floating in the C. In the same way, these proteins are floating in the phospholipid bilayer. So, this model is called as fluid mosaic model. Fluid mosaic model. Guys, I hope you know who, like you know, which scientist gave this model. Okay, who are the scientists proposed this model? The fluid mosaic model of the cell membrane. The fluid mosaic model, proteins, are swimming in the lipid. Yes, proteins are swimming in the lipid. They are doing the pool party. Okay? Yes, sir, yeah, you are true. So, given by Singer and Nicholson. Okay? So, Singer and Nicholson in the 1960s, they gave this model, sir. Okay? Singer and Nicholson, they proposed this model, fluid mosaic model. Okay? So, this fluid uh, is uh, nothing but the phospholipids. The phospholipids are like a gel, they are like a gel in which there are these mosaics of the proteins. Now, let me tell you. So, just write here, phospholipids, phospholipids. Don't forget, what are the important phospholipids we have discussed? Phosphoridyl choline, sphingomyelin, phosphoridyl ethanolamine. Phosphoridyl serine, these are the four phospholipids I have discussed with you. Don't forget, don't forget. So, these phospholipids, they are like what? They are like gel. Okay, they are like a gel kind of substance. Now, question to you. Sir, if you increase the temperature, if you increase the temperature, okay, do you know what happens? Sir, this gel kind of, this phospholipids, now they become more fluid, they become more fluid, sir. 
तो जेल विल बिकम फ्लूड मीन्स fluidity increases with the temperature if you are increasing the temperature if you are increasing the temperature what happens the flexibility the fluidity of the cell membrane increases okay now the cell membrane is becoming like a more fluid like more it's like more like a water kind of thing okay so what i'm trying to put into your mind is sir with increase in temperature what happened to the fluidity mcq if you increase the temperature what happened to the fluidity fluidity increases fluidity increases okay so there is a particular temperature there is a particular temperature okay temperature x at which there is a particular temperature at which the gel state the gel state of the cell membrane will be converted into fluid state this temperature is called as a transition temperature Okay, this temperature is called what? Transition temperature. Now, why I am telling you all the small small details? Because MCQ is there. Very important MCQ is there. So, first tell me, there is like a gel. The cell membrane is like a gel, sir. The phospholipids are like a gel. Now, if you increase the temperature, it becomes more like a fluid. So, this temperature at which the gel is getting converted into fluid, gel to solid state, is called as a transition temperature. Okay. Now, now, see for example, now the temperature. okay i am i am in the lab in the lab i am controlling the temperature sir so the temperature is less than the transition temperature the temperature is less than transition temperature now the temperature which i am providing the temperature i am providing in the lab so i have just certain cells now i am giving less temperature so i am decreasing the temperature the temperature is less than the transition temperature now this is mcq the cholesterol cholesterol what it will do cholesterol in the cell membrane now don't don't forget guys look here i have explained you see dekho lipids the most common lipids are what what are the most common lipids a ah, phospholipids sir okay four types of phospholipids here i have shown you four types of phospholipids apart from phospholipids i have also shown you cholesterol cholesterol is there now what is the important point that i have discussed about the cholesterol cholesterol it acts like a fluidity buffer it acts like a fluidity buffer that's how what i have discussed with you okay yeah look here so cholesterol it's acting like a fluidity buffer it it buffers the fluidity it maintains the fluidity so why i use this word fluidity buffer it's because of this if the temperature is less than the transition temperature cholesterol increases the fluidity increases the fluidity now this cholesterol molecules they will increase the fluidity of the cell membrane they will make the cell membrane more fluidity more more fluid like now if the temperature is greater than the transition temperature okay now you are giving more more than the transition temperature now when the transition temperature is crossed means now think logically use your brains when you cross the transition temperature now cell membrane is becoming like a fluid more like a fluid sir that's not good that's not good okay now now in this condition what cholesterol will do now cholesterol will decrease the fluidity okay will decrease the fluidity so cholesterol it can increase the fluidity cholesterol it can decrease the fluidity okay cholesterol can increase the fluidity cholesterol can decrease the fluidity so that's why it is called as a fluidity buffer it can do both it can maintain the fluidity of the cell membrane with for the phagocytosis or for the exocytosis for both endocytosis and exocytosis endocytosis and exocytosis you need to have a good fluidity in the cell membranes who will mediate the fluidity cholesterol molecules cholesterol molecules simple simple sir okay now next see let's talk about the general thing see i am going out and i am eating all this pizza burger like you know some kurkure kind of thing some nonsense lace kind of thing okay i am just taking all this some junk food sir junk food if i take junk food your your mother knows taking junk food is not good she will avoid you from taking the such kind of foods why sir in junk foods do you know what is present 
So there is saturated fatty acids or unsaturated fatty acids. What kind of what kind of fatty acids are seen in junk food? What do you think? What do you think? Ahmad, Warrior, Miracle World, Priyanshu, Mehnaz, Push, Mirko Student, Kiran. What do you think? In junk food, sir, I am eating Lay's, Kurkre, okay, Cheetos, all this nonsense food. If I take such kind of junk food, what will happen? What do you think? Saturated, excellent, saturated fats. Saturated fatty acids. Okay. Hope you have shared this in your class 9th and 12th. What are the saturated fatty acids? Saturated fatty acids ones are having the, those fatty acids which are having double bond, triple bonds. Okay. This you will study in your biochemistry also. Don't worry. So, the saturated fatty acids, do you know what they do? Saturated fatty acids like palmitic acid, stearic acid. Palmitic acid, stearic acid. Okay. So, these fatty acids, what they will do is, they will decrease the fluidity. They will decrease the fluidity. Means, they are making the cell membrane more rigid. Okay. They are making the cell membrane more what? They are, more, they are making the cell membrane more rigid, sir. They are decreasing the fluidity. That's bad. You need to have a good amount of fluidity so that exocytosis, endocytosis will happen. Cell is exchanging the materials. That's good. Okay. Now, have you ever heard? about the omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, they are good for the body. Okay, do you know what they do? Right. These are all the questions, omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, linoleic acid, linolenic acid. These omega-3 fatty acids, they increase the fluidity. Okay, so this question was asked. What saturated fatty acids will do? The saturated fatty acids will decrease the fluidity. The unsaturated fatty acids, like omega-3 fatty acid, these are unsaturated. This unsaturated fatty acids, like omega-3 fatty acids, um, examples if you want, examples of unsaturated fatty acids, they are lino, lake, acid, lino, lenic, acid, Arachidonic acid. Okay. So, these are all unsaturated fatty acids. Sir. These are all unsaturated fatty acids. Linolenic acid, linoleic acid, okay, arachidonic acid. These are all unsaturated fatty acids. These unsaturated fatty acids are good for the health. They increase the fluidity of the cell membrane. Okay. So, these are the concepts which I want you to know for your exam. Okay. After this, in your first year, what you should know? Let me tell you some more important points about the proteins. How many types of proteins are there? How many pro types of proteins do you know? Okay, in the cell membrane, 55% is the proteins. Highest concentration of proteins present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. We have seen. How many types of proteins do you know? Come on guys, how many types of proteins do you know? Riyan, Shu, Kiran, Shah. Varun Kashyap, Fun Mode, Miracle Sword, Lagarwal. Three types. Okay. Yes, of course. Like, you know, in, in your first year, just remember two, pro two types. Okay. There, of course, yes, there are three types. That's a more complex classification. Now, for you, let me tell you two types. Okay. First, let me tell you two types. Okay. So, let me show you, sir. Yes, of course, I can agree with you. There are three types. But in your first year, for your little brains, let me tell you the basic kind of proteins. Okay, see, there is this first protein, okay, there is this first protein, like this, okay, which I am showing you like this, they go. So, this is the first protein. Now, this protein, it's present outside the cell, it is present inside the cell, outside also, as well as inside also. So, this protein, it is floating, sir, it's simply swimming in the lipid bilayer, okay, it is present outside also, as well as inside also. So, it is passing, it is passing through the membrane, through the cell membrane, outside, through the cell membrane, as well as it is present inside. So, these proteins are called as integral proteins. Okay, these are called as a integral proteins. As it is passing 
from outside to inside as it is passing from outside to inside it is also called as a transmembrane protein it is transversing it's totally passing through the membrane they are also called as trans membrane proteins okay integral proteins are the transmembrane proteins now let me show you one more protein so this is the protein same protein it's either present on outside or either present on inside so those proteins which are just present either on outside or inside these proteins are called as pps which means peripheral proteins okay so integral proteins and peripheral proteins the second type is called as a peripheral protein so tell me what exactly are the peripheral proteins peripheral pro proteins are present either inside the cell membrane or either outside the cell membrane that's it so these are the two types of proteins done okay now 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 what is the use of proteins use my question to you sir in the cell membrane bilipid layer okay everything is good cell membrane bilipid layer okay everything is good sir what is the function of these proteins what they are doing what are these proteins doing sir okay any idea so these proteins are what so these proteins they are channels they are channels sir some proteins act like a channels some proteins act like carriers okay, some proteins are channel proteins some proteins are carrier proteins first let me tell you what exactly is a channel what exactly is a carrier what is a channel sir dekho guys simple let's put it this way channel means this is the cell membrane again i am showing you this is the cell membrane made up of the phospholipid bilayer now look here this is the protein which i am drawing you uh, drawing here in black color see dekho so this is a protein now this protein what exactly it is doing it's like a funnel sir it's like a tunnel it's like a tunnel so this proteinaceous structure is just like a tunnel so through this tunnel substances are going to move in and out okay for example sodium will come inside into the cell sodium is coming into the cell from outside sodium will come into the cell or through a different type of channel see this is a different type of channel potassium is going out so what are the channels sir channels are nothing but the proteins which are involved in the transport of certain substances okay which are involved in transport of certain substances either in or out now my question to you sir does the channel is it undergoing any shape change it's just like a small hole sir just like a small hole made up of proteins okay it is not undergoing any shape change there is no conformational change during the transport of substances okay during the transport of substances now then what is a carrier sir carrier look here what exactly is a carrier means again cell membrane okay cell membrane now look see now this is a protein now let's take this as a protein sir okay this is a protein now it's a carrier protein okay now it's a carrier protein so what exactly is a carrier carrier means see some substance will come and bind here see some substance will come and bind here sir now when the substance is coming and binding with this carrier protein do you know what happens by using the energy okay see this carrier protein it will change its shape it will undergo conformational change so the substance which is present outside the cell now it's going to come inside the cell okay so now what happens is dekho the same protein is going to flip it have flipped sir it have flipped it have changed its shape so that what happens the same x substance have released into the cell into the cell so carrier proteins will undergo right con formational change in their shape so they will undergo conformational change in their shape sir okay done so carriers completed channels completed will channels undergo any shape change there is no shape change in the channels but there will be a shape change with the carrier proteins okay now why i am discussing all this because what are these proteins sir what are these proteins what is the function of these proteins sir this integral proteins and you know, mainly right now i am talking about the integral proteins 
Okay, right now I am talking about integral proteins. Now this integral proteins, okay, now this integral proteins, they can be channels or they can be carriers. What else? Sir, they can be enzymes. The integral proteins can be enzymes. What does I mean by enzymes means what happens is they go, this is a cell membrane, cell membrane. Now in this cell membrane, there is this integral protein present. There is this integral protein present, sir. Okay, there is this integral protein present. Now this integral protein, look, now this integral protein, now it will convert the substances. It will do enzymatic reaction. It will do enzymatic reaction. So these integral proteins are involved in catalyzing the reactions. So it's true, integral proteins can be membrane, uh, can be enzymes. Integral proteins can be channels. Integral proteins can be carriers too. Okay, so this is a integral protein. What it is doing? Converting a substance A into a substance B. Simple enzymes. Fourth, these integral proteins can be receptors. Okay, these integral proteins can be receptors, sir. What exactly is a receptor? Again, cell membrane. This is a cell membrane. Okay. Now, insulin is coming. See, insulin. From where this insulin is produced? Sir, insulin, it is produced from pancreas. Okay. Pancreas produces the insulin. Now, insulin, I have taught you, sir, insulin is a peptide hormone. It cannot cross the cell membrane. So, this insulin is acting on this protein. They go. Now, insulin, it is going to come and act on this protein. So, this protein is what? This is integral protein. It's an integral protein. How it is acting like? It is acting like receptor. Okay, it is acting like a receptor, sir. So, these integral proteins can be receptors. Now, this insulin is coming and what it is doing? It is ringing the bell, sir. It's ringing the bell. Okay, just like a ringing the bell. Okay, these receptors are like bells. Now, these receptors, once they are activated, they will bring the changes inside the cell. They will bring the changes inside the cell. That we will discuss in detail in your systemic physiology, what exactly insulin is going to do. But what I am trying to put into your mind here is, sir, these integral proteins, what are their function? The integral proteins can be channel proteins. They can be carrier molecules. They can be enzymes. They can act like an enzymes. They can act like a receptors. They can act like a receptors are true. So all uh, these are the functions of the integral proteins. Okay. So we are done with the integral proteins. Now, what are the function of the peripheral proteins? If you ask me, sir, then what is the function of peripheral proteins? Let me write here. Peripheral proteins. Now, in a simple diagram, if I have to show you the peripheral proteins, how I have to show you the peripheral proteins? The peripheral proteins are going to look something like this. This is the cell membrane. Now, peripheral proteins are present either outside or inside. That's it. Either they are present outside or either they are present inside. Okay, this is the cell membrane. Right? Now, my question to you. My question to you. Sir, these peripheral proteins, na, what is the function? What is their function, sir? Peripheral proteins. See, from the, this peripheral protein or this peripheral protein, they are attached. See, now they are attached to the extracellular matrix and intracellular matrix. These peripheral proteins, they will attach to the extracellular matrix and intracellular matrix, sir. So that they give the stability to the cell. They will give the structure to the cell. These peripheral proteins are very much important in the maintenance, cells, in the maintenance of the cell shape and cell structure. Okay, so peripheral proteins, very important. What is the function? Maintains. Okay, maintain cell structure. Okay, they maintain, they help in the maintenance of cell structure. In the recent FMG exam, in the recent, okay, the last FMG exam, this question was asked. So can you tell me any examples of this peripheral proteins? Some examples, some names, sir. Some names of the peripheral proteins. Let me write here. Peripheral proteins. It's ka naam. Yeah. Peripheral proteins. Okay. Some peripheral proteins include spectrin and chirin. Okay. So, spectrin and anchirin. Next, dystrophin. So, what are these? 
Okay, what are these three things? Sir, spectrin, anchorin, and dystrophin, these proteins, all these three proteins, they are all examples of peripheral proteins. They are all peripheral proteins, which means either they are present outside the cell membrane, they are attached outside the cell membrane, or they are attached inside the cell membrane. What is the function? They give the cell shape and structure. They maintain the cell shape and structure. The tensile strength to the cell membrane is given by these proteins. Now, let me show you one cell. Let me draw you and show you one cell. You just name me what is that cell. What is that cell? Okay. Sir, can you tell me what is this cell which I am showing you in front of you? What is this cell? Agarwal, Sumit, Miracle World, Hitar, Shinmori, Tushar. Any idea? Guys, what is this cell? Come on. Don't you know that biconcave cell? which is there in your body, okay, which will live for 120 days after it's going to die in your spleen. Spleen is called as a graveyard. You have shared in your like class 11th and 12th. What is this? This is the RBC, right? This is the RBC. So now RBC is having certain shape, right? There is a certain shape or particular shape is there. Okay. What is that shape? By concave, by concave shape. Now, do you know this biconcave shape is because of the spectrin and anchorin? They are present. Yes, they are peripheral protein, but present where? In all the cell membranes, no. They are present mainly in the RBC. They are present in the RBC cell membrane. They are responsible for, for this biconcave shape. They are responsible for this biconcave shape. Okay. Now, my question to you, Deko. My question to you. Sir, if the spectrin, if it is a mutated, damaged, spectrin gas, some problem, some damage to the spectrin. And anchorin. Anchorin is also damaged. Spectrin gone, anchorin gone. Now, when the spectrin is damaged, do you think RBC can maintain its shape, biconcave shape now? No. No, sir. Now, the RBCs, do you know how the RBCs will become? RBCs will become more like elliptical. Okay? Elliptical shape. The RBCs will become elliptical shape. So this condition is called as. Okay, now this question was asked. What is this condition in which the RBCs are becoming elliptical in shape? It is called as hereditary, okay, elliptocytosis. Okay, hereditary elliptocytosis. The RBCs are becoming elliptical in shape. The question asked, what is the defect? Which protein defect? Spectrin. Defect in the spectrin. If the spectrin is mutated, it will cause ellipsoid RBCs, elliptical RBCs. Now, if the anchorin is if it defective, if it is defective, if there is defect in anchorin, now RBCs will become round shape, round shaped RBCs, spherical RBCs. So this condition, it is called as hereditary spherocytosis. Okay, hereditary spherocytosis. Many times the question was asked, in FMG exams and PG exam, hereditary spherocytosis, it is due to spherical shaped RBCs or round shaped RBCs. Okay, spherical shaped RBCs or round shaped RBCs. Done. Now, just answer my question. Sir, spectrin and anchorin, are they integral proteins or peripheral proteins? So, spectrin and anchorin are peripheral proteins. Dystrophin, peripheral protein. Now, whenever in your life, if you listen the word carrier protein, are a channel, carrier protein, are a channel. Always, always the carrier proteins and channels, they go. Carrier proteins and channels, they are example of integral proteins, not the peripheral proteins. Carrier proteins and channels. Okay. Next. So, recently in the FMG exam, in the last, last FMG exam, recently in the sense, six months back. Okay. In the January, uh, January exactly the question, uh, January 20, the FMG exam happened in this 2023. Dystrophin, where it is present, sir? Where it is present? The dystrophin, it is a peripheral protein present, present in cell membranes, cell membranes of skeletal muscle, sir. Skeletal muscle ka membrane mein. In the skeletal muscle cell membrane, this dystrophin is present. And this dystrophin, what it will do, give? It will give the strength and shape and structure to the muscle. Muscle. So, dystrophin, it is present, not in the RBC, it is present in skeletal muscles. It is present in the skeletal muscles. Now, what if, 
what if this dystrophin it is absent completely absent sir okay dystrophin absence dystrophin is absent in the skeletal muscle membrane in the sarcolemma the skeletal membrane uh, the skeletal muscle cell membrane is also called as a sarcolemma in the sarcolemma this dystrophin is absent not there do you know any idea guys fun word varun kashyap like you know those students who are in your second year i i think you have completed your first year i hope guys can you tell me agarwal agarwal tushar fun word fever of the cricket guys can you tell me if the dystrophin if this structure if it is absent completely it is going to cause a disease sir. the disease short form also i will tell you the disease is called as a dmd dmd what is the dmd sir dmd duchenne's muscular dystrophy duchenne's muscular dystrophy okay so complete absence of this dystrophin will cause duchenne's muscular dystrophy the person is going to have weak muscles now not the strong muscles weak muscles the tensile strength to this muscles are not there dystrophin is absent okay weaker muscles sir duchenne's muscular dystrophy see now imagine i am a child imagine i am a child sir okay i am suffering with the duchenne's muscular dystrophy dystrophin is not there okay dystrophin is not there in me now i am just doing the squatting okay i have done the squatting now if you ask me to raise okay to stand if you ask me to stand i have a person who is suffering with duchenne's muscular dystrophy so do you think my muscles are strong enough to lift my body just like that no okay i am having duchenne's muscular dystrophy so do, do you know what i will do so this child who is suffering with the duchenne's muscular dystrophy is always fatigue he is always having like you know body pains he is fat he won't do any work if you ask this person to stand up he will use his okay he will use his upper limbs to support his body to support his body he will use his upper limbs the sign is called as the sign so the child using his upper limbs to lift his body the sign is called as gover sign gover sign sir it's a sign gover sign now tell me sir gover sign it is seen in duchenne's muscular dystrophy absence of dystrophin dystrophin is a peripheral protein present in the skeletal muscles skeletal muscles okay so these are the important points which you should know gover sign is going to be seen sir okay gover sign is going to be seen now dystrophin sir it is not completely absent see it's not completely absent it's there it's there but it is a defective defective sir so dystrophin if it is defective okay again question that will come in your exam dystrophin hai but not complete absence but there is defect it is going to cause less severe problem less severe problem that is becker's muscular dystrophy okay so the becker's muscular dystrophy sir that is bmd bmd so becker's muscular dystrophy is due to defective dystrophin duchenne's muscular dystrophy is due to complete absence of the dystrophin but at the end of the day the point which i want you to know is dystrophin is a peripheral protein okay dystrophin is a peripheral protein sir okay so i have discussed about the integral proteins as well as the peripheral proteins so integral proteins completed as well as the peripheral proteins important peripheral proteins are also completed okay now okay let me ask you one thing uh, some important questions let me tell you imagine i am the child imagine i am a child who is suffering with the duchenne's muscular dystrophy what sign is going to be seen so the sign that is going to be seen in me it's going to be the gover sign it's going to be the gover sign okay it's very hard for me to lift the body okay gover sign is going to be seen okay cool now these patients will die with what's the most common cause of death sir in duchenne's muscular dystrophy the most common cause of death any idea guys what is the most common cause of death sir diaphragm is also a skeletal muscle okay diaphragm is also a skeletal muscle now it's a weak skeletal muscle sir in duchenne's muscular dystrophy it's a weak skeletal muscle so is he going to have a proper breathing normal breathing now no normal breathing not there sir so respiratory distress this patients will die with Okay, the most common common cause of death is respiratory distress. Okay, now you understood how to integrate the concepts, sir. Physiology, you should integrate it with the diseases. 
this is how the questions are being asked in the exams these days. In FMG exam, in PG exam, this is how the questions will be asked. So PG exam, okay. Okay, it's a high, like a you know, high level exam. Even in FMG exam, they are asking the questions almost equivalent to PG exam. There is no difference between FMG and PG exams these days. Okay, highly, highly integrated topics. So, Duchenne's muscular dystrophy, dystrophin defect. Okay, respiratory distress is going to be seen, Gover sign is going to be seen. Okay, so with this, integral proteins as well as peripheral proteins are also completed, sir. Okay, now, guys, now, let me discuss about a small topic. Okay, let me discuss about a small topic, that is, cellular junctions. Okay, let me discuss about the cellular junctions. Tomorrow, I will explain you about the cytoskeleton. In this class, let me explain you about the cellular junctions. Okay. This is something important both for first year students, second year students and those students who are going for the exams. Even this is very important, sir. Okay. Now, let's see. This is one cell. Okay. This is one cell. And this is the other cell. Two cells are there. So these cells, they are sitting on a membrane, basement membrane. This is the basement membrane. Let's take it as a basement membrane. So that's a basement. Now these are the two cells which are sitting over here. They are happily talking with each other. These are the two cells. Okay. Now these cells are actually joined, sir. Okay. The our cells are not freely like you know, floating. They are not freely floating in the space. They are tightly attached with one another. The cells are compactly attached with one another. There is a cement. Imagine these cells like a bricks. In between these bricks, you usually put cement, right? For their adherence. The same way. Now our cells are also having junctions between them. So what are these junctions? Sir? That's the question which will come in your exam. Okay. So these junctions, okay, let me write one by one. Let me show you the image first. Look here. Look here. This is one cell, this is the other cell. Okay, one cell, another cell. These cells are tightly attached with one another. The first junction which I am showing you in between these cells, they go. This is the first junction. This junction, like you know, this, uh, these are the proteins actually, these are the molecules which are tightly attaching the two cell membranes. Tightly attaching the two cell membranes. So, what are these junctions called as? Uh, these junctions are called as the tight junctions. Okay, so these tight junctions, let me draw it here, they are present on the top of the cell, they are tightly attaching one cell with the other cell. So the first cell junction is the tight junction, right? Tight junction. Now in your exam, they will ask you, so the intracellular adhesions, intracellular adhesions, okay? First junction, the intracellular adhesion, the first intra intracellular adhesion that I am talking with you is the tight junction, okay? So these tight junctions, these molecules are there, right? These black color molecules which I have shown you. So what exactly are these molecules? So what are these molecules which are forming the tight junctions? See, look here. They are occludins and claudins. Claudin and occludins, these are the proteins. Claudin and occludin, these are the junctional proteins, the junctional adhesion molecules. Junction means a cellular junction. So claudins and occludins, they are the junctional adhesion molecules. They will tightly bind one cell with the other cell. Tightly. Okay, so right, important MCQ. First, tight junctions are formed by claudins and occludins. So, claudins and occludins forming the tight junctions. Okay, done. The second junction, which you can see here, is adherent junctions. Okay, the second junction, see, these are the different, totally different type of molecules which are binding these two cells, which are binding these two cells. These are called as the adherent junctions. Okay, adherent junctions. These adherent junctions are formed by which proteins? These adherent junctions are formed by, see they go, cadherin. Cadherin is also, okay, cadherin is uh, it's like a, usually we will call a cadherin like a glue, sir, biological glue. Okay, even in your class 11th and 12th, I hope you have studied it. Cadherin is just like a glue which keeps the cells together. So, adherent junctions, okay, right? Adherent junctions 
are formed by cadherins. Okay. So second junction also completed. Like any other junction, sir. See, there are gap junctions. Okay, the third junction, first junction completed, second junction completed, the third junction between the two cells is the third connection between these two cells is now I need to actually uh, make a little change in the diagram a little change sir. okay there you go. see in between these two cells I'm creating a gap okay I'm just creating a gap sir okay so there you go now there is a gap between these two cells now as there is a gap between these two cells now the substances from one cell can actually go into the other cell there is exchange of materials, the exchange of ions, exchange of voltage can also happen later will, you will understand. Okay, so there is a junction between these two cells through which the substances are getting exchanged. So this is the gap right now it's like a window, now it's like a window. Okay, so these gaps are called as gap junctions, gap junction, okay, that's called as the gap junction. Now question to you is, so these gap junctions are made by which molecules, which molecules are forming these gap junctions? Sir, gap junctions are formed by, okay, gap junctions are formed by connexons. Okay, connexons, these are the molecules, these connexons are made up of connexin, connexons are made up of connexin, that's not that important, but anyway. Connexons are forming or involved in the formation of a gap junctions. Gap, where the gap junctions, the substances are going to be exchanged between the cells. Okay, true. And the last one which I want you to know is the desmosomes are the superhero. Okay, out of all this, if you want me to, if you ask me, well, who is the superhero, sir? It's the desmosomes. So the desmosomes, okay, these desmosomes, these molecules, these desmosome molecules, they are also help in binding one cell with the other cell okay desmosomes these are also proteins sir. actually these are also proteins which are helping in binding one cell with the other cell so last one last junction is desmosomes sir what are the examples of these desmosomes what are the examples of these proteins desmosomes there are actually four type of desmosomes sir. there are actually there are four proteins involved okay four desmosomal proteins involved Okay, what are the four desmosomal proteins which are involved? They are desmo, glean, they are called as a desmoglean, MCQ, desmoglean, desmocolin, okay, desmoglean, desmocolin, okay, desmoglean, desmocolin, okay, desmoplakin. Desmoplakin and placoglobin. Okay, placoglobin. So, desmoglin, desmocolin, desmoplakin and placoglobin, these are the desmosomal proteins. These are the desmosomal proteins. Now, in your first year, you will, you will like, you know, you will, you will think like, you know, sir, should, should we have to know all these things at the cellular level? Are they important? Yes, they are very much important when you study the dermatology sir. when you actually study the dermatology and when you are actually studying the clinical subjects and the clinical practice see, these are these will make sense in between the two cells there are these desmosomal proteins desmosomal proteins which are helping binding one cell with the other cell tightly binding one cell with the other cell for example think logically now if this desmosomal proteins are defective there is damage to this desmosomal proteins now what happens to the cells so now the cells are getting separated. Now this epithelial cells, now they will start to separate from each other. So the cells are not going to bind with one another. Now they will start to separate and they are just floating. Okay. So that will cause femphigus. Femphigus or femphigus vulgaris. You will study in your dermatology. Okay. So desmosomal proteins completed. So what are the four important junctional proteins that I have discussed? Uh, sorry, what, what, what are the four important junctions that I have discussed? Tight junctions, adherent junctions gap junctions and desmosomes desmosomes right now completed sir desmosomes the last one okay let me put here the desmosomes in a uh, different color see so for example this is one desmosome desmosome yeah, these are the desmosomes which are binding the cells now anyone in this class okay only an intelligent student can answer this okay guys anyone in this class can answer what i am drawing right now see what am i drawing right now they go 
so there is this molecule it is binding the cell this 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 molecule it is binding the cell with the basement membrane okay it's not binding the two cells together it's binding the cell with the basement membrane sir so what is this molecule any idea so it's also tightly binding the cell with the basement membrane otherwise the cell is going to be floating okay so this molecule is called as a hemidesmosomes okay these are called as hemidesmosomes highly integrated okay with the dermatology hemidesmosomes are desmosomal proteins are different desmosomal proteins are helping in attaching one cell with the other this one hemidesmosomes are the proteins which are involved in binding the cells with the basement membrane okay binding with the basement membrane okay now let me <coughs> show you here so this is one cell dekho this is one cell second cell okay now what are these so here you can see different types of junctions see the first junction is a tight junction this is a tight junction sir number one junction is a tight junction okay let me erase and write one by one okay look here so these are the tight junctions okay next adherent junctions after adherent junctions you can have desmosomes also here gap junctions are not shown okay desmosomes now can you see what is this molecule sir this molecule and this molecule okay this molecule and this molecule two molecules now one molecule i already know it one molecule i already know it sir the cells are attaching with the basement membrane the cells are attaching with the basement membrane with the help of this molecule what is this hemidesmosomes hemidesmosomes you know this but apart from hemidesmosomes in if you going little deep if you are going little deep into the medicine then you have to know this also so what is this so there are molecules called as a focal adhesion molecules okay focal adhesion molecules okay which is nothing but the integrin the name the, the molecule name is called as integrin so the focal adhesion molecules and hemidesmosomes focal adhesion molecules and hemidesmosomes they attaches the cells they attaches the cells with the basement membrane with the basement membrane okay with the basement membrane okay done sir now totally exam purpose exam exam point of view imagine now you are the one who is giving the next exam so what you should know so i have explained you the concept now where we have said about the connexons okay where we have said about the connexons now i will tell you important mcqs dekho where we have said about the connexons sir connexons are the molecules which are involved in connexons are the molecules which are involved in what gap junctions see dekho in gap junctions who is forming a gap junction this gaps are gaps between the cells like you know the gap junction not the gaps between the cells the gap junction between the cells which are involved in exchange of the materials okay so this gap junctions are made up of what connexons now if this connexons are defective there are multiple types of connexon different different types of connexons are there which as a doctors we don't want to go in that detail but if this connexons if they are defective they will lead to certain diseases sir they will lead to certain diseases what are those diseases that will be asked in the exam in your fmg exam okay so what are those diseases that will come so right connexons defect will cause idiopathic okay idiopathic atrial fibrillation sir what is atrial fibrillation in your second year pathology will understand okay in physiology you should know uh, connexons are the molecules which are forming the gap junctions sir if there is any problem with this connexons that will involve like you know that's included in the pathophysiology that will lead to idiopathic atrial fibrillation okay idiopathic atrial fibrillation sir next second disease it can cause is x linked charcot mary tooth disease it's a peripheral nervous system problem okay peripheral neuropathy is going to be seen that also in your pathology okay when your second year you will understand it better okay these are all a b c d sir first you should know this later you will understand the things better okay so connexon problems can lead to idiopathic atrial fibrillation x linked charcot mary tooth disease and it can lead to cataracts in the eye cataracts in the eye okay leading to the cataracts in the eye 
and erythro keratoderma disease one more disease is called as erythro erythro keratoderma okay erythro means red color rash keratoderma the skin is going to be keratotic like you know thickened okay so erythro keratoderma variables okay erythrokeratoderma variabilis so these are the diseases so question that can come in your exam is which of the following diseases are due to conexon mutation conexon mutation will lead to charcot marie tooth disease true erythrokeratoderma variabilis true cataracts idiopathic atrial fibrillation true okay now sir where we have said about the desmoglin now use your mind use your mind sir use your mind Desmoglin. Where you have said about the desmoglin? Desmoglin, desmocolin, desmoplakin, placoglobin. Where we have said it? Desmoplakin, placo, placoglobin. Okay. Where we have studied them, sir. We have studied them. These are the desmosomal proteins. Desmosomal proteins, sir. Okay. Now, don't forget. These are the desmosomal proteins. Okay. So, desmoglin, desmocolin. Here, I have written. So, desmosomal proteins are desmoglin, desmocolin, placoglobin, and desmoplakin. Now, what happens if there is a defect? What happens if there is a defect? Dekho. Now, I am having desmoglin. In exams, these are the questions that will come. Hundred percent, these are the questions, sir. Sir, actually, there are three types of desmoglin. Desmoglin one, desmoglin three. There are three types. There are different types of desmoglins. Sir, if this desmoglin one, it if it is a defective, what happens? Just think logically and tell me, sir. Desmosomes are not there. If desmosomes are not there, are defective. The cells, do you think proper intracellular junctions are going to be there? No. So cells are going to separate from each other. One cell is going to separate from each other, sir. Even in the skin, the epithelial cells, which are also called as the keratocytes, these epithelial cells are called as the keratocytes, sir. Now they will start to separate. Now, in between the cells, gaps are coming, sir. Gaps are going to come. That's not good. So wherever there is a gap between the cell, fluid will start to come and accumulate over there. So you are going to have the blisters, blistering disorders. You are going to have the big, 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 like, you know, water blisters. That disease is called as a femphigus. Okay, femphigus. So, desmoglin one defect will cause femphigus vulgaris. Okay, femphigus vulgaris. Desmoglin three defect will cause femphigus foliaceous. Okay, femphigus foliaceous. Pemphigus vulgaris and Pemphigus foliaceus, foliaceus in both these conditions, what you are going to have is, the, it's a blistering disorder, sir. You are going to have bubbles on your skin. Blisters, fluid filled, like, you know, fluid filled uh, blisters. Why? You ask why? Simple. Sir, the cells are getting separated because the desmosomes are not there. The cells are getting separated. Okay, the one cell and the other cells are getting separated. When the cells are getting separated, the fluid will start to accumulate between the cells. So, fluid accumulation will lead to the blister formation. Okay, done. So, this desmoplakin and placoglobin, what are they? They are also desmosomal proteins. Okay, they are also desmo uh, desmosomal proteins, sir. Now, defect in this desmosomal proteins, defect in this desmosomal proteins will cause different type of emphigus. There are different type of emphigus, sir. This is called as para neo plastic emphigus. Okay. So, they will ask you, paraneoplastic femphigus is due to defect in, desmoplakin placoglobin, femphigus foliaceous is due to defect in, desmoglin 3, femphigus vulgaris is due to defect in, desmoglin 1, connexon defects, okay, connexons mutation can lead to idiopathic atrial fibrillation, X-linked charcot, uh, charcot Marie tooth disease, cataracts and erythrocaratoderma variables, okay. So, these are the important points which I want you to know. Okay, these are the important points which I want you to know, sir. Okay, so if you know this much, like you know, this is how you have to study. Like you know, you have to integrate this various cell membrane. Where are the diseases? So the cell membrane components, like desmosomes, hemidesmosomes, a defect in them will lead to different different types of diseases. Okay, connexon defects cause what? Okay, let me try to stop, uh, like you know, unnecessarily in the middle. Now just 
if you can wait two minutes, I will add a few more important points. Now, have we ever studied about hemidesmosomal proteins anywhere? Hemidesmosomal proteins, sir. Okay. Hemidesmosomal proteins. What are the hemidesmosomes? Hemidesmosomes and focal adhesion molecules. See, they go. Now, here I have discussed. So, the focal adhesion molecules, the integrin and the hemidesmosomes. See, these are the hemidesmosomes. They are attaching, they are going to attach the cell, epithelial cell with the basement membrane. Now, if this structure, if this protein, if it is a defective, okay, now what happens? Let me first tell you. Sir, what are the examples of desmosomal proteins? Sir, desmosomal proteins include uh, desmoglin, desmocolin, desmoplakin, placoglobin. Okay, these are the desmosomal proteins. What are the hemidesmosomal proteins? Now, you should know BPAG1. Sir, BPAG1 is a hemidesmosomal protein. BPAG2. No need to know the full form. Just, we'll, just as a doctor, if you know, you should know BPAG1, BPAG2. They are the hemidesmosomal proteins. Okay, BPAG1, BPAG2. Now, if this BPAG1 and BPAG2, if they are defective, sir, defect, sir, BPAG1 and BPAG2, if they are defective, that will cause which kind of disease? That will cause a disease called as bullus. Bulla, again, bulla. Means fluid filled cavities, blisters. Okay, bullus. Pemphi. Goid. Okay, bullous femphigoid in a simple way. Sir, hemidesmosomal proteins are defective. That will cause bullous femphigoid a disease. Okay. Now, only in, in bullous femphigoid, both are defective. In bullous femphigoid, both are defective. Sir, there are certain diseases in which only BPAG2 is defective. There are certain diseases in which only BPAG2 is defective, sir. What are they? BPAG2 defect can lead to these two types of diseases. They are linear IgA disease, linear IgA disease, okay, linear IgA disease. Once you study your pathology, skin disorders in pathology, when you study the skin disorders, there it will be helpful, okay. Hemidesmosomal proteins like VPIG2 that is a defective that will lead to a disease called as a linear IgA disease and VPIG2 um, defect is also seen in herpes. Gestationalis. So, in herpes gestationalis also, okay, herpes gestationalis, that's a disease, sir. In herpes gestationalis, in linear IgA disease, what is the hemidesmosomal protein that is defective? It is BPAG2. Both BPAG1 and BPAG2 defects are going to be seen in bullous femphigoid, sir. Connexons are present in gap junctions. Claudins and occludins are present in tight junctions. Cadherins are present in adherent junctions. Desmosomal proteins are examples. What are the examples of desmosomal proteins? Desmoglin, desmocolin, placoglobin, desmoplakin. What are the examples of hemidesmosomal proteins? Hemidesmosomal proteins include BPAG1, BPAG2. Sir, what are the molecules? What are the junctional molecules which are helping in attachment of one cell with the basement membrane? Two types. Hemidesmosomes and focal adhesion molecules. Hemidesmosomes and focal adhesion molecules. Cholesterol is a fluidity buffer. Okay, cholesterol, what it will do, sir, below the transition temperature, below the transition temperature, cholesterol increases the fluidity. After the transition temperature, means above the transition temperature, cholesterol decreases the fluidity. So, it's called as a fluidity buffer. Okay, fluidity buffer. Now, which cell membranes have highest concentration of proteins? Highest concentration of proteins are seen in the inner mitochondrial membrane, sarcoplasmic reticulum and presynaptic membrane. Which cell membrane have highest concentration of lipids but less amount of proteins? Schwann cell membrane. The myelinating, the myelinating cell for the peripheral nervous system. Answer. So, this is how the questions are going to be asked in your exam. Okay. Spectrin defect will cause hereditary, hereditary elliptocytosis. Ankyrin defect is going to cause hereditary spherocytosis. Okay. So, the first class, this class will be enough. See, now we are starting with the ABCDs. Okay, these are all the ABCDs. First, you should know what is normal physiology. What is something normal? Normal junctions, normal junctional proteins. What are the normal desmosomal proteins? Normal hemidesmosomal proteins. First, know the normal. After knowing the normal, abnormalities. Okay, abnormalities. You can understand. Okay, so this will be enough for today.
in tomorrow's class we will discuss about the cytoskeleton and the other topics in the physiology whatever the basics which you should know that will be discussed in the tomorrow's class this will be enough for today hope the class is helpful okay every day we are going to have the classes okay so please be regular sir the first thing which is needed for a student is regularity okay it is a discipline that is very much important you should attend the classes okay on a regular basis for example if you miss a one single class the total chain is going to be broken okay you cannot understand the for example without understanding this class you cannot understand the tomorrow's class okay so it's a regularity it's a discipline that's very much important in the medical field okay having said that hope the class is helpful for today see you tomorrow thank you